going to be taking a tour of Google Analytics um, from the perspective of a website owner and how to get the most out of it. Um, like they said in my introduction, I'm a, a WordPress developer. I work at Bluehost, and I'm a core contributor. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Mike Hansen Me. You can, my website is MikeHanson.me. Uh, I have not blogged there for a very long time, but <laughs> it has a contact form. <laughs> so if you need to ask me any questions or uh, follow up with me in the future, that's the place to find me. So analytics can be a little intimidating. Um, there's a lot of really great info out there on the, all over the internet, but sometimes it's hard to even read it and make sense of it. Um, so if at any time during the presentation, if I say something uh, and you don't understand the word, please raise your hand and ask and I will do my best to describe it as simply as possible. Um, so um, a few things that I just want to differentiate right now before we start is um, users and visitors, two different things. Users are you, the site owner. You're a user on the analytics account. Whenever we're talking about users, we're talking about you. Whenever we're talking about visitors, we're talking about your traffic. Um, we're also going to be using account, property, and view um, to distinguish, well, we'll get into that, exactly what that is. Um, but they are different, and so if there's any confusion there, please ask for some clarification. And then metric versus dimensions. Um, a metric measures something, and a dimension describes something. So when you're reading these articles online and you're reading it and you're trying to make sense of it, those are, those are some things to, to try to keep t in, your, in your mind. So, uh -oh. so this is, where does the analytics code go? It, actually, it goes right before the body tag in the head tag. Um, so if you're looking at your site and you're looking at the source code on your, on your site, you'll want to find wherever the closing head tag is right before this and put your analytics in there. Um, one thing you might want to look into is if you're using the ga.js file, that is the old classic analytics, uh, um, it will be deprecated for universal analytics, which is the new analytics. Um, everybody's using the new analytics, whether or not you're using the old JavaScript file or the new JavaScript file. It's just whether or not uh, you get the benefits of universal analytics. Um, Google is not WordPress. They will deprecate it. <laughs> so make sure that you get that updated. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is dashboards. This sounds like it would be the place you land when you log in, but it's not. Um, by default, the place you land is audience overview, which makes sense because that's probably the main thing you're going to look at. But dashboards are really helpful. And you can create a new dashboard. This picture isn't great, but you can see here um, it says new dashboard, create new dashboard. So if you click that, and it'll allow you to create little widgets of stuff that's important to you. So this is the kind of stuff you might put up on a wall board in your office, just to look at it passing. Not super detailed, just a quick overview. Um, dashboards are a per user thing. So remember we talked about users. You might have five users and you have your own dashboards. So feel free to build dashboards, make, make the best use of it you can. But they're also shareable. You can share them across multiple users. So if you want to share it with your boss, your coworker, whoever, you've built this great dashboard, you can do that. Um, when you create a dashboard, there are templates if you just need something fairly simple. And there's also advanced options where you can go in and create anything, basically anything you can do in analytics, you can also create and put on your dashboard as a widget. So real time. This one seems exciting. You look at it, you probably look at it too much. <laughs> um, it's not it's not all that helpful, but it's there. Um, what, what it's best to use it for is to just make sure that things like, if you started a campaign this morning, you want to make sure that that campaign traffic is coming in. You want to make sure that there are people on your site, that your analytics is working, period. That kind of stuff. Um, or if you want to pop in at 2 o'clock and see if you're in the ballpark of what's normal. That's the kind of stuff you use it for. Nothing to make decisions on, nothing to 
take too seriously. Um, it does track sources, campaigns, that kind of stuff, but it, and events. But it doesn't do any of the advanced analytics that you may want to see when you're digging, when you're digging into your analytics. So the way Google Analytics works is it takes the data, it processes the data, and it shows the data. So when you're viewing real time, you're viewing it basically before it's even been processed or during the processing phase. So tomorrow is when you'll get the real processed data. So because that's how the flow works, remember that it's already been processed. It's not going to get processed again. So any changes you make in the future are not retroactive. So if you change something today, it's from today forward. <coughs> so the, adi the audience acquisition and behavior. This tells you a little bit about who they are, how they got there, why they're there, and what they're doing. This is what you're interested in, or maybe what you think you're interested in. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is useful information, but again, you may, I know I look at analytics too much, or have in the past. Um, and so, <coughs> but audience tells you who your visitors are, who they are. Um, not, not, nothing personal identifiable about them, but more of a stereotype of your general visitor. Um, there's also, in audience, there's also a user flow, which is nice because you can see the, the path most traveled, basically. Um, if 80% of your traffic's coming to this page, they're going down a specific route and they're exiting, maybe that's the area you should focus on. And maybe you should figure out why they're not visiting the other pages. Maybe they're hard to navigate to, maybe they're just not all that helpful, that kind of stuff. Um, but that's one of the, the interesting just remember, this is who, who, who your user is. Um, acquisition is how, where, why. How did they get here? Where did they come from? Why are they here? And am I giving them what they're looking for, right? So this is how they, um, <coughs> this is just when did they come? Where do they live? All this kind of stuff. Um, pretty helpful stuff, especially when you start combining this with your marketing efforts. You might realize that you have a ton of traffic from Texas for some reason. And you might start marketing t to just Texas and seeing your conversion. But also follow your conversion rate and make sure that that marketing is working. So maybe you're just getting lucky and the more you push, the less you make. And you just realize that this is a nice little thing and it's happening, let me improve elsewhere. So everything in analytics should be about making your website better, making, always improving your website and so that you can get more out of it. So like I say, in the example of Texas, you have all these people from Texas that are buying things, all that kind of stuff. It's great. You, don't, you may need to take a second look and try to improve it. If you do try to improve it and it doesn't improve all that much, or maybe it, uh, it goes down, <coughs> then you might realize, I don't need to mess with this, this is working. Why is it not working elsewhere? So then you start improving in a completely different area. And behavior. So behavior is what they're doing while they're on the site. These are uh, events that are getting fired. Um, these are pages that they're viewing. These all of um, just the user or the, the visitor's behavior while they're on your site. How much time they're spending on each page, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's something in there called site speed. Um, and it's not, it only runs on a portion of pages. But it's, it's good to know because if you have a specific page that has low traffic, low conversion, high exit rate, that kind of stuff, you might want to take a look at your site speed and see how, you know, is that page loading slow or not. Um, there's, this is where you can also link, there's also additional metrics and dimensions for AdSense. Um, this requires linking to your AdSense account. Google really likes it when you link all of your accounts together, Webmaster Tools, AdSense, <coughs> Google Analytics. You get more out of everything when you link them together, and you can do it all from your, your analytics dashboard. There's a, this is also where you can run content experiments. Um, this is basically A-B testing. And so while you're looking at your analytics and you want to improve things, um, you, you'll want to use content experiments to swap out copy, swap out pages, all that kind of stuff, just to make sure that you know everything you test is getting better before you deploy it, that kind of stuff. So again, don't just make 
decisions and just see what happens. You can roll it out to a small percentage. It has an algorithm that basically takes the pages and says, okay, this page is doing really good. I'm going to give it a little more, give it a little more, give it a little more. If it's doing really bad, it'll pull it back so that you don't lose a ton of money or a ton of conversions or that kind of stuff. So it's a safer way to A-B test. Um, there's in-page under behavior as well. And this, it's kind of cool when it works. Um, it's, it's an experimental feature. Um, it's still in beta. And, but it will take you to your site and it will show you a heat map of where people click and what they're doing on the site. And so it's really cool when it works. It gives um, some data as to what your users are doing and, and you can see what, what's working on your site and what's not. Maybe you have a giant call to action that's not even getting much attention. And, but maybe you have some ad or something, uh, I don't want to say less important, but something that's not supposed to get as much attention as your main call to action that's getting a ton. And so you might want to reevaluate that, move it somewhere else, move your call to action somewhere else, make some improvements. Um, like I said, everything in analytics, remember, is to make your site better. Um, it's not just to look at for fun. So in order to get the most out of analytics, you need to be tagging all of your links all the time. Um, and this, you're going to get some crazy link that looks like this. Um, what I suggest is using a, a link shortener, something like URLs or even Bitly, um, although I would highly recommend URLs over Bitly. Um, but if, when you tag everything, this is going to come up in your analytics dashboard under the proper thing. Otherwise, Google Analytics is just guessing. Uh, urls. urls. Oh, yeah, you and then like urls. Okay. Yeah. And so, but otherwise Google is just guessing at what, what, where these things are coming from. So the source can be, you know, GitHub or New York Times or something like that, like a descriptive word, not necessarily a domain, um, but more of a descriptive word. Um, Medium is where you might want to say something like, oh, this, this came from a display ad that was 250 by 250. Um, content is actually ad content. Um, and what this is, is so you're running ads on, on Google. And you're running two ads that link to the same page, on the same campaign, everything. But one of them is a guy running, and one of them is some kids playing in the park. How do you know the difference between these two ads? Well, you put it in the ad content. You describe what the image is so that when you're later evaluating, you can say, well, look, this red image worked way better than the blue image or vice versa. Um, you can also put things in there that don't necessarily make sense. Maybe you can just put like image 59, right? Um, as long as it makes sense to you, that's okay. Um, but I would go more for it makes sense in general. But that's up to you. Everything in analytics also, just do, do what works for you because it's, it's your analytics, it's your site. But tag everything so that, so that you can, you define what analytics is seeing, not uh, Google Analytics guessing. So conversions, we have huge conversions, all the money, um, but conversion rate isn't always about money. There are other things on your website that are important too. Um, for example, on my, on my website, I have some goals that are, I want people to view two or more pages. I want people to stay on the site for longer than three minutes. Those goals don't necessarily have a monetary value attached, um, but they're still goals and they still have a conversion rate. Um, the conversion rate um, could be anything. So it could be any number. So you'll hear some people say, you know, 3% is a good conversion rate, 4% is a good conversion rate. It's all, it's all kind of uh, out of context. Um, conversion rate is, is, it is what it is. It's what it is for your site, that's it. Um, nobody else is in the same situation as you or has the same exact site, all these things. So what's important is, is that your conversion rate is always improving. Better than last week, better than last month, better than the last Wednesday, because today's, you know, or something like that. Um, but conversion rate also isn't the end. It's not, you shouldn't get your conversion rate up so high and, and just let something else drop completely off the map. 
So an example is, is we have two websites. They both sell a hairbrush. One site sells the hairbrush for a dollar, and they have a 3% conversion rate. So let's just say they, have, they made $3. Another site sells the same hairbrush for $4, and they have a 1% conversion rate. They are making more money with a 1% conversion rate. So that's not the end all be all. Um, so like I said, some goals are not um, monetary. So submit, subscribing to your um, mailing list, uh, filling out your contact form, visiting so many pages. These aren't monetary things, but you should still attach a monetary value, um, a penny or something, because then Google Analytics will give you additional information. Um, and if you say, well, this will screw up all my numbers in analytics, Google Analytics is an accounting software. It's, an, it's for website <laughs> analytics, <laughs> right? So, uh, so just remember that. The numbers aren't exactly accurate, but put them there so that you get those additional metrics and dimensions when you're viewing your analytics. Um, it, helps, it helps later when you're looking at the data to identify trends and act on them. So it gives you things that you can act on. So attribution. Um, so now we have our, this website, we have everything, we're selling things and people are checking out and the website's making money. But who do, who do we give credit for that? Um, it depends, it, it really depends on your website. So if you're a small website that has a hard time getting visitors and the introduction to your brand is very important, you might, you might look at something like first interaction as being more important because getting them introduced to your brand is more important than them coming back because they'll come back on their own or they'll come back through other ways. But them just knowing who you are is very important. Now, do you think Amazon cares the first interaction? I, I doubt it. Um, I would imagine that Amazon cares about the last interaction. Where did you come from when you bought this? Because you've already been here 100 times before. So um, just depending on your business, depending on what you're doing, I know this is a lot of it depends, but it, that's true. <laughs> Um, so, in the ones that I like the most are linear and time decay because I, I just feel like everything's important, but on, on your common sites, your small business sites, your, you know, your local sites, um, but also time decay because it is, it is important. You know, maybe somebody wrote up a great blog post about why you, they, why you should buy their product. And then that was converting. So, you know. I, I like those two, linear and time decay, but again, it's all about what's important to you. And it, does that make sense for everybody? Which one? Okay. So the administration screen. How many people have ever been in this screen in their analytics? A few. Okay. N not a lot, a few. <laughs> uh, this screen is powerful. Um, this is where you start turning your analytics into useful things. Um, you, this is where you can create new views. So you can have one website, one analytics tracking code, and you can be tracking that data in two views. And those views can do different things. So remember we talked about it collects the data, it processes the data, and it then displays the data tomorrow. You can process the data twice in two different views. You can process the data 25 different times in 25 different views. So why would you have different views? Different people. Um, you might have different departments. So let's say you're a fairly big company and you, have, you might have your, your SEO guys that are interested in specific things. So you create a view, you, give it, you, you set it up just how they want it, they access that only. And then you, you might have like the HR department. They want to see how many people are visiting the careers page, where they're coming from, where they're going. That's all they care about. They don't care about how many people are checking out. So you create up different views for different departments, different things, and everything. Always leave a default view. <laughs> because if you delete these views, they don't come back. So always create one that you haven't tinkered with, you haven't messed with. It's the, the backup, essentially, of your data. So keep that one, and then just create new ones. And before you create new views, always, always test them. So don't just add something to an existing view that you've been using for a year. Create a new view, test it out, 
it worked, delete it, add it to the older one. So you're testing things and not you know, manipulating the data in a bad way. The administration screen is also where you can, add, where you can link multiple Google products, like AdWords, Webmaster Tools, and DoubleClick. This is where we can change default settings. Does anybody in here write long form content and have a high bounce rate? Yeah, okay. So the default is a 30 minute session. And maybe it's taking users longer than 30 minutes to read that entire article. But after, the th after 30 minutes, they're counted as a new session. Even though they just went to the next page, that's a new session. And it counts as a bounce. It counts as a bounce and a new user. So you can adjust the session settings. So you can adjust, if you have a site where you can adjust your sessions up to two hours, because maybe people are staying on your site a really long time. You can also adjust campaign parameters and how long they last. By default, it's six months. So if someone visits your site from an ad or a blog post or something that was tagged, that will live with that user for six months. You can adjust that. Maybe you want things more more uh, fine-tuned and you want it for only one month. So this is where you can really change things. But like I say, change them in their own, their own views, their own, so that you're not uh, messing up the whole property or the whole account. Um, this is also where you can manage emails and alerts. This is the most amazing thing in Google Analytics. For those of you who are looking at Google Analytics every single day, you're looking at the same view or you're looking at the same, you know, you're drilling down to your specific data and that's all you really care about. You're looking at this every day. You're, you're probably wasting a lot of time. I know I, I did. Uh, so what you do is you get down to this view or you get down to the specific data that you want and then email it to yourself once a week. You can email the report to yourself once a week. And so you don't stress about it. You just read it. It comes in, you read it, and then you make decisions based on that. So you view what happened last week, what happened last week compared to the week before. So that you're not stressing out about the analytics all the time. This saves a ton of time. And a lot of times, so you'll, get, you'll start getting campaigns or things coming in, and they, they don't have time to ramp up, and you're panicking. You're just stressing yourself out. You should create, these, you should create automated emails and automate your analytics a little bit. Because when you do that, you'll just view the report, you'll see what's happening, you'll make decisions. So you have these emails, but you say, once a week, I get this email that tells me about whatever. But what happens if it went drastically wrong three days ago? There's also alerts. So you can say, if my sessions drop by 50%, that's really unusual. Send me a text message. Google Analytics can do that. They can send you a text message and tell you what's hey, something doesn't look right, you might want to jump in and take a look. Um, you can also say, hey, you're getting a huge spike in traffic and you may want to make, make some action on that. So what this, this is great to inform you of things. This is not a tool to monitor server uptime, <laughs> right? So you should know, you should have something else doing that for you. This is not what this is for. Um, but Emails and alerts are amazing. So you've heard me say views a few times, but so, and you, you create up a view, you spend a lot of time, and then you wanna test something. You can create a, a new view that's just empty, and you, can, and you can completely customize it, or you can take an existing view and you can clone it, and then just add the individual thing that you need to change or test. So you clone a view, you, you add your specific uh, filters, goals, events, whatever. You do that and then it works, you delete it, you add it back to the other one. Because the other one has historical data. The new one, remember, because it's not retroactive, had no historical data. And then filters. Filters are amazing. Um, just like WordPress, you can filter data as it's coming into the process phase. So if you have URLs that are have a ton of Maybe you have a page and it comes in with multiple parameters, but it's the same page, that's something else. Those are counting as two different pages in your analytics. And so you can filter those URLs out or those pr additional parameters out of the URL and force it to look like one page in your analytics. You can filter out, maybe you have a file or something that you don't, 
the, maybe you have the same page shows up under multiple URLs too, you can filter that. You can also filter out specific domains. Referral spam happens in Google Analytics. Um, I'm not gonna say names, but there are a few domains that will send you traffic and it's 100% garbage. And filter that out of your reports altogether. Um, so that's where this is done. You can also filter based on location. So for example, you're a small tire shop in Wyoming and you have a website and you create a filter that says, show me my visitors from <coughs> Wyoming. Because that makes sense. You don't, you don't really care what people in Florida are looking at your website. You, you don't, because they're not gonna drive to Wyoming to buy tires. <laughs> um, they're gonna go somewhere in Florida. So you have your backup, you have your, your view with just your state, just your area. It can get pretty specific. And then that's the data that you might wanna count as being more valuable than just the giant bucket of data that Google Analytics gives you by default. User management. Just like WordPress, you need to manage the users in your analytic. So you, you are the account owner and you give a user access to a view or a property. You can choose what, what level of access they have. You can give them read and analyze. They can't delete anything, they can't add anything, they can't change anything. This is probably a good idea for most users. Because you give someone access to your analytics and they accidentally delete it, it's gone. Like, you can't get it back. So monitor your users um, and there's different levels. You can give them edit, which gives them everything. You can give them collaborate, which allows them to kind of type notes, do a, a few things. Um, and you can also give them manage users so they can manage other users. That's a big one because if they can manage users, they can create a new user who can do whatever they want. These are not mutually exclusive. All of these are separate. They're not like, they're not like roles in WordPress. They're all mutually exclusive and you can give a specific user one and not the other or any combination. So we've been talking about goals and talking about a few goals. Um, these are the, the main types of goals you can set up. Destination, they land on a specific page. Um, the duration on the site, like I said, on my site, I, have a, I like them to stay for longer than three minutes because that shows that they, were, they weren't just there for a minute, you know? Um, and events. Events is a little more advanced because it requires you to add additional JavaScript or something like that most of the time. Um, and pages per session. These are the default goals. Um, events is really powerful. Basically, you can do anything you want if you create up an event the way, either through JavaScript, through whatever way you're firing events, um, or even using the interface. Um, so a good example of like a destination would be a thank you page. They, they reached you know, your thank you.html page. Well, how did they get there? That's not, a, that's not a menu item, right? They went through the checkout, they paid you, you confirmed that the payment was made, and you redirected it to the thank you page. The only way they're gonna get there is if they've completed a bunch of other things. And so this creates your funnel. So you, they might have went to your single product page, added it to your cart, made it to your cart, filled out all the, the billing and shipping, and who knows, so, some sites that's a lot of steps, some sites it's a few steps. And then they, they transacted and the thank you page is the end. And so this is your funnel and it's nice because then you can see where they're falling out of the funnel. So maybe they visited the single product page, they added it to their cart and then they fell out. That they never completed the, the goal. And so you can know, and if you're seeing a lot of users fall out of the funnel at a specific point, <coughs> you can know where to look in that process. Okay, so like I said, alerts. Um, earlier, we talked about alerts. Um, you can do, basically these are your, your, all your metrics and dimensions in Google Analytics. You can do anything, you can say, if it's less than, here's this, if it's more than, do that. If it's equal to something, you know, all these things. Send me an email or, or text it to my mobile phone. Um, you can say per day, per month, per week, all of the things. The emails, the automated emails, amazing, I'm telling you. <laughs> Especially with your boss wants a report and you don't want to give them access to the analytics because you don't want them in there looking around, messing things up, all that kind of stuff. Set up an email and send it to your boss once a week so that he can see it. This is for users who, this is for everyone. It's for you 
to quit looking at your analytics so much, and it's for you to send to other people who you don't even want to have access to your analytics. So um, the email reports are are great. Are those emails, is that you forwarding them, or can you set up their emails in there and send them directly? You can put their email in there, and you can also put who it came from. So you can put that it came from me, and it's going to you, and Google Analytics handles that. So. Okay, so <coughs> filters, like I said, manipulate, exclude, include. You're gonna wanna, you can manipulate the data like the parameters that we talked about. You can exclude sp the spam referrers, or you can create an include only. Maybe you have a really big referrer, and you want their data all on its own. You can include only data from them, and to monitor that more closely, to make more actionable data. <coughs> The tracking, you can track the campaign life, session life, search sources. Search sources is a big one. And in WordPress, we know that the parameter is S, right? So you go in under your administration panel, under your view, turn on site search, put an S in that box. And you will start seeing in your analytics what your users are searching for. That's the best piece of data you can have. Because they're on your website, they're looking for something, and they either found it or didn't find it. So that's something you should set up today. <laughs> so I was going to jump into the dashboard and do show a few examples, but it sounds like we're about out of time. Um, but so, so I will jump in just for a quick minute and show you where these things live. So. So this is, your, this is your account, your property, your view, your view settings. This is where you can create new views. See, I have an unfiltered one, I have a test one, and then I have my general one. You'll want to do this. Um, the site search is here. You turn on site search, you put in an S. Also strip it from the parameter so it doesn't show up as a duplicate page. Um, and then you can, you can also set up all kinds of things in here. This is, this is the most powerful thing in analytics, and I, I think everybody should go poke around in the administration panel of analytics. And again, that's just located here. You're typically on the reporting screen. It's just the admin. That's all I got. This is the ad, this is the ad linking and stuff. Um, and like I said, the more Google products you link, the more info you're going to have. And it's not just... Like I said, it's not just to look and see how many people visited stuff. It's, it's actionable data that you can make decisions on. Can you go back to where you were when you added the S into there? I'm yep. Um, so, under, so under test view, create new view. This is going to be your, your new view. Or you, could, you can edit an existing view, too. But like I say, always have that backup that has nothing associated with it. And then, um, oh, let me see. So this is what sh the screen you'll land on after you create your new view. And it's just right here, site search tracking. Thank you. Oh, let's give Mike a big round of applause. Thank you very much. <laughs>